okay um so good morning uh, and good evening everyone i welcome everyone to the webinar on success factor lms new ui uh, also this is to inform you that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be uploaded on the vibrant partner social media also should you have any question during the session please post it in the chat window our panelist will take it up in the q and a session moving to our panelist today we have ritesh singhvi partner and solution director at vibrant partners and ashwini shankar functional lead at vibrant partners with that let me hand over to ritesh to introduce himself and vibrant partners hi everyone uh, good morning good evening uh, this is ritesh singhvi i am one of the partner and solution director for vibrant partners uh, it's been almost 13 years i am in sap world and uh, currently focusing on success factors uh, talking about my professional expertise i am uh, certified or i would say professional certified in multiple modules of success factors been into uk germany india singapore and i work with uh, those all clients there Uh, if i'll uh, talk about vibrant partners uh, vibrant partners is a uk based it company focused on hr and finance solutions we have our offices and operations in uk india and uae uh, we are also sap success factor and sap conquer implementation partners uh, talking about our expertise so our experts has uh, in depth understanding on the technology and mapping the technical solutions using sap success factor or sap conquer to your uh, business challenges and realizing them through the transformation we also focus on delivering a simple yet significant improvement to your hr process uh, thereby improving your overall hr capabilities uh, you will probably see on our first page which talks about our uh, services which we do uh, also about our capabilities and uh, you will also see uh, the uh, url of our website and linkedin and the contact details yeah. uh, that's about uh, me and from my side uh, i'll pass it to ashwini to introduce about herself thank you ashwini you are you are talking on mute maybe yeah i'm i'm so sorry i didn't i didn't realize it yeah sorry about it So um, hi everyone. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, one uh, all of you for joining us today. So I'm Ashwini Shankar, functional lead at uh, Vibrant Partners, with uh, more than ten years of experience uh, on uh, SAP Success Factors Learning Management System. Also with hands-on experience on uh, Employee Central Service Center and SAP Enable Now. I've been providing end-to-end -end solutions to organizations dif uh, from different domains like pharma, retail. manufacturing etc and uh, at vibrant partners uh, with the process and the domain consulting we help clients to achieve the operational excellence and today i'm here to present the success factors new interface to you that's everything thank you great to know these details uh, so let's see what are we covering today so here is the brief agenda that uh, we'll be covering today expert advisory for learning and development learn how the future is changing for lnd how sap success factor is changing as per the current needs what are the changes in the new success factor learning ui we all know that learning plays a crucial role in every organization so ritesh can you brief us what are the new trends learning trends in 2020 yeah sure ashish uh, thanks for the question uh, okay let me pick up some of the topics which we um, i feel that uh, are the new learning trends in 2020 uh, the first one if i talk about is uh, upskilling and reskilling uh, you know the future of uh, work demands uh, a near constant cycle of upskilling and really uh, reskilling to keep your employees uh, knowledge and uh, capabilities current and uh, organization competitive Uh, to achieve this if you see employees are focusing on accessibility and the personalization of their learning experience 
uh, while you see there are some misconception that uh, there should not be personalization of trainings and all but ideally personalization helps every employees learn their best uh, learn best of uh, their ability whether enabling them to learn on their own pace or uh, using uh, uh, different devices like desktop and mobile uh, considering the uh, covid situation which we have at the moment the remote work is also uh, complaining the uh, learning tableau and the learning industry will likely invest more time and budget into remote training initiatives in uh, 2020 or probably in 2021 as well so that's what i feel about upskilling and reskilling which is really a new trend the other one uh, or the second one which i feel is uh, manager development which is really really important these days and you know that uh, companies are really seeing growth uh, in the uh, in our demand in managers training especially companies becoming flatter and more agile these days and not only companies are asking for it uh, i have seen that couple of managers also asking for the things that yeah we should get trained first or we should have our own uh, uh, jobs which are already prepared so that we can help our team to adopt the healthy healthy communication and productivity habits so that's what i feel about the manager development which is really required these days the third thing which i feel is uh, soft skills uh, so up, up until if you see last few years uh, workplace training has focused teaching a very tangible set of skills uh, usually related to a personal uh, person's title nowadays the skills uh, training will be highly demand especially on the demand which work for workplace uh, requires uh, employees to have skills that are uh, cross departmentals and it, it's not something which is relevant just for their title or within their department an employee will become more fluid learner because of this they will have uh, more knowledge on the topics which is uh, probably both inside and outside of their specific field which where they are working yeah so this is third thing which i feel as soft skill uh, the next thing which i would say is social learning and we all know that social learning is playing a good role uh, uh, from decades uh, but today's uh, tech advancement allow uh, social learning to go to the next level by adding social technologies like slack uh, microsoft teams uh, probably skype uh, linkedin learning those things into the learning ecosystem uh, such an approach what uh, happens is it use the technology which can uh, better enable your uh, collaborative learning which may help uh, in the engagement yeah so this is about the social learning which i feel the the other thing or the biggest thing which i feel is uh, strongest employer and learner uh, partnership so these days employer and learner partnership is increasing in numbers more than ever we are seeing learners reaching out to workplace uh, partners to identify the skills for the employees which they need then employees are going to those workforce partners and working in collaboration to develop or deliver those kind of uh, skills or the trainings and programs so that is something which is really crucial these days uh, the most critical one which i feel which we all need it in these days is uh, artificial intelligence so while ai is uh, intent to make your jobs uh, uh, more efficient and easier the learning and development programs can uh, in turn upskill their workforce using same ai that replaces these manual jobs uh, if i'll give an example ai enables people to learn uh, at their best uh, at their best of their capacity it is easier for a computer to implement a program to remind uh, the employees about their uh, trainings which they need to complete then uh, human to self implement these reminders yeah. so uh, these are the uh, few points which i feel are the new trends in uh, 2020 yeah thank you this is really yes. great information ritesh so this was about the new trends in learning uh, so ritesh what should we expect for the future of learning yeah thanks ashish uh, yeah so if we talk about future of learning uh, there are couple of uh, topics or i would say lot of topics but uh, i i will pick up some of them uh, first one if i talk about geofencing it's 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 kind of a new word or new technology uh, not everyone have uh, heard of this so geofencing in one of the most uh, convenient and emerging uh, emerging trend in training and development 
using your smartphone or other devices, uh, geofencing can deliver bits of uh, job related trainings or uh, development just uh, when you need it. If I'll take an example, if you reach to office on Monday morning, how about geofencing sending you an alert saying that uh, these are the new regulation changes over the weekend happened in your company? Yeah. So that's what I feel uh, geofencing can really help in uh, learning and development. The next one which I talk about is uh, individualized approach. So these days there is no longer an adequate one size fit all approach uh, which works, which means not every employee will have same kind of trainings or same kind of uh, learning which they need. Uh, there are employees who are coming to you with a specific and uh, various training needs. And one of the biggest future of training trend is to more have the individualized, uh, individualized approach to training that allows employees to have their own choice to do the training. Yeah. Uh, the next one, if I'll talk about, uh, it can be adaptive content delivery. So using AI, the content delivery can really, uh, I mean, your employees can adopt uh, these, these training needs, which are really, emerging and it's really a convenient way to personalize and individualize your training as well. Yeah. Uh, if I'll give an example, uh, in success factor, there is something called as uh, personalized recommendation and how it works is uh, based on, uh, for example, based on my learning history or my training completion, it will pick up those topics which are uh, something which I'm taking it as frequently in the training and give me a recommendation. Uh, so that's how an AI or machine learning works. Uh, if I'll take the next topic, uh, micro learning. So there are, uh, I mean, there are trends in these days that people do not want to sit and do uh, trainings for a number of hours. Instead of that, uh, there are micro learning, which really continue to play a huge role in the future of training, providing uh, easily digestible bytes of information or instructions which uh, can be sent to them as a video or it can be part of uh, audio as well, which will be immediately applied to the task which they are doing or the projects which they are working on. Yeah. Uh, probably the last topic uh, which I will pick up is uh, repositioning the training. Uh, you have probably heard of groans when uh, announcing the next wave of training to employees. But what if uh, you uh, position your training as a part of a benefit package instead of something to be endured? Uh, while making these, uh, much of these has to do with the quality and relevance of the training itself. But on the job training can really help employees to move, uh, improve their skills uh, and advance their career. And, you know, it doesn't need uh, a cost kind of thing, which means uh, it's all on company time without paying a dime. Yeah. So these are a couple of topics which I feel uh, are the future of learning and development. Yeah. Thanks, Ashish. Really great stuff, Ritesh. Appreciate your inputs. So guys, let me hand over the session to Ashwini as we have a lot more to cover today on the success factor new LMS user interface. Over to you, Ashwini. Thanks, Ashish. So, um, yeah, so to start with the new learning administration interface. So uh, by now, I believe that we might have taken a glimpse of the new system. So before getting into the details of what the changes are, first, let's understand why was the change required. So uh, as all the major browsers uh, are ending their support for the flash by end of 2020, the learning administrator user interface is now being replaced with a HTML based elements by the by SAP. So in this, we would be covering how to navigate to the learning administrative system and do we still have access to the old interface and how do we access that? Followed by that, we would be seeing what are the key terminology changes that is affecting or that's being impacted on the admin UI as well as onto the learner UI and what are its impacts on the reporting functionality. Then we would be seeing the key entity changes uh, in terms of creating an item, adding an online content, what are the changes at the user level and uh, what are the impacts on the scheduled offering. Also, we would be covering the functionalities that's been removed out of the new system. 
and also we would be seeing what has what SAP has planned for us to release in the upcoming releases. So with that, I'll move to the next slide to show you how to access the new admin interface. So the new admin interface can basically be accessed through the new tile that's available on the Success Factors homepage. So by now, if an administrator who has accessed the system would have noticed the a new tile that has appeared to them called as Learning Administration, once when we click on this, it is going to take the administrator into the new UI. So does that mean that the old interface has been removed from the system? The answer would be no. The flash-based administrative system is still applicable to the administrators. The reason being, this is since the new UI is totally new and we need to get ourselves familiarized with it and do the comparison between the old UI and the new UI to understand the change, we still have access to the old system and it's the same way as how we access it earlier. So just by accessing the admin, admin center from the success factors, you can still access the learning administration. So what if an administrator wants to access the new UI from the old flash based UI? So on the administrative welcome page, we can see a link called as here, which is an hyperlink by accessing this link over uh, here would take the administrators to view the new UI. So all this is being applicable for the SaaS customers. So we have our validated customers for whom the system upgrade happens once a year. So how do they access? Right now, all the validated customers also see this style learning administration on their system, but accessing this style would not take them to the new UI, rather that's gonna take them to the old UI. So when this is going to change is we have a timeline defined by SAP for it. We would be seeing in our later uh, slides so that we get to know when exactly the new UI would be applicable to the validated customers. So what is it we have to consider in terms of a validated customer? So in order not to confuse the administrators, validated customers can still hide the style from the interface so that the admins can still access only the old UI until the new UI is being connected to the tile that's available to them. All right. So the landing page, which we have seen in our previous slide. So how does uh, how do we make a change to the content that is available over there? So basically, from the admin perspective, we had the introduction panel IDs called as default admin intro, wherein uh, if we if the administrators had made any changes or if an organization had made any changes to it, now they would be seeing a new introduction panel called as default learning administration intro. So the changes has to be made into this uh, introduction panel in order to reflect their customization. So next we have a brand new system here with the HTML interface. So first thing, all that we could see is the menu that's been moved on to the left panel. We also have the control to expand or collapse these menu. We have the workspace. So depending on the menu that's been selected, you can see that it's been reflected onto the workspace. Then you have this option to maximize the workspace and hide the menu screen completely. So once when you click on the full screen, the administrator has the full system to do their work using the workspace. So what are the new navigation changes that's been uh, taken over in the new release would be first is the menu change. So basically in the new release, the navigation menu has been reorganized into its logical groupings. So what exactly is the purpose to do this? So SAP has actually considered the feedback that's been provided by all the customers and the partners to redesign their menu in order to remove the duplicate functionalities. 
and it consolidates the day to day tools and reorganizes the menu options. So use of reducing the clicks and freeing up the valuable time. So that's the main purpose of redesigning the menu in, in the success factors learning management system. So any functionality which dealt with managing users learning are all moved into the manage user learning or uh, learning element. So what is that we need to consider here would be to in order to review the existing roles and the workflows that's been assigned to ensure that the administrators have the appropriate permissions to access the entities in the new navigation because earlier in order to access these features we had the workflows called search view and edit in the old ui but in the new ui we we are going to manage this uh, entity menu based on the search and the add permissions so next we have the terminology changes so as i mentioned so considering all the feedback SAP has made the terminology changes here. It's basically to improve the clarity, consistency and the alignment across the SAP success factor suite and to allow for an easier onboarding of the new administrators. So the learning administration terminology are being changed for the major entities. And all these major changes are being applied to all 40 supported languages. Also, one more key thing to be noted over here is this change, the terminology changes are also being reflected into the old UI as well as to the new UI. So when an administrator who is logging into the system and accessing the old UI do not see scheduled offering. So it means that there is a terminology change that's taken over. And now instead of scheduled offering, all that they would be seeing is classes. So the key recommendation here would be to train or to make the administrators aware that the terminology change has happened. So uh, I'll just let you know certain key uh, shift, certain terminology that has been changed. One would be the scheduled offering, which is being termed to classes. Catalogs are now renamed to libraries. Requirements are now called as curriculum requirement. Classes are renamed to cohorts. Users are now being called as people. Commerce is now termed as finance. Questionary survey is now termed as survey. Any label changes that is being modified by the organizations or the administrators those labels will not have any impact on these changes. So now we have seen the terminologies that are impacting the administrative UI. We should also have to know, does this gonna impact the terminologies on the end user interface? The answer to it would be yes. So these are the main changes that's happened to the end user interface. So as a supervisor, if they have seen uh, my employees tab on their system, now it would be termed as my team. And end users who used to browse the catalog to find their trainings or the courses would now be browsing the library because the catalog is now termed as library. And the end users who used to register into the scheduled offering are now going to register into the class. Course evaluations to provide the feedback. So now that's been changed to course feedback. Any segments of the scheduled offering is now being termed as time slots. And from the manager perspective, earlier they used to see their subordinates. Now it's, it's been termed as direct reports. So next thing is the report. So all these label changes and the terminologies is that just affecting the admin UI, UI and the end user UI? No, it's also going to affect the report functionality. So all the labels, all the out of box reports are being now changed with the applied with the new terminologies. Any custom reports which 
had which have, which actually made use of the label IDs, the standard label IDs. You can now see that the changes has taken over into your custom reports as well. So next we would be seeing the entity changes. So entity changes are basically the functionality changes that we are going to see now. So first major change that we would be seeing is creating an item. So earlier in the old UI, we when in order to create an item, we first have to select the type of the course and then proceed to put in the details to create a course. But right now it's been made easy for the administrators so that you just when you click on add new, a form just opens up and you fill up the required information in it. And you can also notice the classification is defaulted to other. So admins don't have to select the type of the course. Rather, the course is by default other type. So a question would arise. Will the course remain other always? No. How does the classification change? So we have these two tabs called as online content and agenda template. So if I want, if an administrator wants to create an online only course, all that they have to do is after creating the course as type other, add a content into the online content. Automatically the course classification would turn its classification type from other to online type. So what if we want to create a scheduled only course? It's the same thing. First create a course with the type other, but we have this agenda template. Add an agenda to the course. Automatically the course would classify itself as instructor led or scheduled only type of course. So the third type we had called something called as blended. So in order to make a course as blended, all that an administrator has to do would be add an online content and add agenda template to it so that the course automatically classifies itself to blended course. One other major change that is uh, done in this new upgrade is making changes to the items with online content. So most of the validated customers prefer to have a revisioning of their content as well. With the older UI, we did not have the flexibility to retain the content with its version, with its uh, item version. But now, if a course has been assigned, if an online courses have been assigned to a user, and if the user has completed it, and if there is any major change, or if you want to modify the content structure to the online course, it is current. It is not going to be possible. Rather, what we have to do is we need to revise the course and make the changes to the content structure. By doing this, we, we retain the revision and the content that's been part of it. So next we have users read only data fields. So here we we know that the data, the user data flows from success factor suit to learning management system. So in the older UI, we had the flexibility of modifying or updating any changes to the user data. But now in the new UI, it's been restricted any data changes that has to happen to the employee information or to the employee profile, it has to happen only in the success factors suit. So the data that flows from success factors to LMS will be a read only data. So next that we are going to see will be the changes or uh, the functionality changes with respect to scheduled offering. So it's not just that the scheduled offering uh, term is being changed to class. Rather, there are a couple of functionality changes as well. 
So in the legacy UI, we had an option to drag and drop and hover over the user to change their registration status. But in the new UI, we don't have the drag and drop option. Rather, we need to select the overview option represented by the three dots in order to edit or remove the users from their registration. So the next change with respect to the class or the scheduled offering would be the time slots. So in the old older UI, we had two different views. One is to view the slots or the segments in calendar view as well as in a list view. But in the newer UI, we only have the list view in order to make any changes to the slots. So next we would be seeing the features that's been removed from the current system. So the first functionality that's been removed from the uh, upgraded system is the power search bar and uh, with the command and the keyword search. So all its related APMs, so the power search synchronization and the optimization APMs are also being removed. We have the guide me mode and recommend next for performing tasks. So that's also been removed from the new upgraded system. Also the out of box welcome to success factors administration UI and the home page quick links are no longer available in the new UI. The reason to remove this video is it was built on a flash content. So that's it's been removed. The user entity fields prior months of service, prior years of service, position, resume, gender are no longer managed in LMS or that's the learning management system. Rather, it is all being managed in the success factors system. Along with this, uh, the user data, like native deep link user, when the user is locked, new resetting the passwords like applying the new password or verify password are also no longer available because this LMS system is going to be integrated with the BizX suite. So we no longer need the native uh, information to be available in the system. So what exactly is SAP uh, planning to add in the upcoming releases? Currently, if we have noticed the recent tab which used to appear on to the left side of the screen is no longer available in the new UI, but this is a most required functionality of LMS system. So this is on SAP's roadmap and it would be part of our next release. Similarly, administrators bookmarking and entity in the system is currently not available. Again, this is in SAP's roadmap so that we can expect this functionality to be added into the new UI in the upcoming releases. Next, we have record configuration wherein we make changes to the fields and where we set the mandatory fields is currently not there in the new UI, but it is still part of the old UI. So if an administrator who wants to make any changes to the record configuration can still access the old UI and make the changes over there, which can be reflected, which will be reflected in the new UI so that when an administrator accesses the new UI, the changes made in the old UI will be reflecting over there. That's the workaround for now. But again, SAP has this on their roadmap to be adding it to the part of the new UI in the upcoming releases. So next we have the timeline. We have already seen the first upgrade has happened to the preview on April 10th, 2020 and production is also being upgraded on June 5th, 2020 and all those three functionalities which we have seen, which SAP would be adding it into the upcoming releases. So now it's been included as part of the patch 
and which we can expect it to be added into our system in this month. So, so the next version or this next release where we can expect the HTML file learning administration interface will be completely accessible and with non flash technologies. So the preview of it would be released in October 16, 2020 and the production we can expect it on 20th of November. So this is for our SaaS customers. For the validated customers, so the sandbox and the preview is already been upgraded and the patch for the reasons and the record configuration would take place in August and their production will be upgraded in December 2020. So with this, let's see how these changes are in the system. Ashwini, uh, just to interrupt. Uh, so I just wanted to add a couple of points here. So the way how Ashwini explained about all the uh, new terminolo terminology as well as the timeline, what we're talking about is uh, the learning management system of success factors and uh, how that works is uh, it's kind of a hosting platform where you can create uh, different kind of trainings. Uh, previously, it was all flash based uh, system, but uh, since flash is going away, uh, success factor has already upgraded the system to HTML and you will see a uh, new uh, kind of new screens now uh, in the system. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to push this message. I mean, nothing else. Yeah. Ashwini, you can you can continue. Thanks, Ritesh. Yeah. So let me uh, open the system. I hope my screen is visible to you all. So right now I'm on to the success factors interface. So as we have seen, we have this learning administration tile onto the end user interface. So this is the tile which is going to take us into the new system. So let me click on learning administration to take you to the new UI. So here we have our new UI. So you can also notice we have this drop down onto the top left corner where you can still access the BizX components here, performance, onboarding, etc. So also you can switch between different modules from being from the SuccessFactors LMS system. As we have seen to the left side, we have the menu panel where you have this option to expand and see all the components of it. And also you have this option to collapse it. And here we have our workspace. For example. Yeah, so this is the workspace. And if we need to hide the menu, you still have this option so that it hides the menu. In order to get back the menu, just click on it where you can still get back the menu here. So this is accessing the new UI. If an administrator wants to go back and access the old interface, all that they have to do is from the drop down access admin center. And access learning administration. Yeah. 
and here they have the old UI available. So let me go back to the new UI and show the key changes that has have taken over in the new release. So the first change would be the menu. So if we have noticed any component that has to be managed, which is going to manage the user learning element is all under manage user learning. We had learning tab in the old UI, which wherein we used to manage all the learning activities. So now that's being termed as learning activities and we have all of its components here. Classes is not so this is the terminology change where classes was earlier called as scheduled offering. Libraries was our uh, catalog. Next we have content where we create the content. We make any changes to the content elements. So we have them all under content, which also now includes the surveys document links. Also we can see the terminology changes, the legacy questions, exam objects, are now being referred as legacy. So people, which was our user earlier, is now being termed as people. So anything that we are going to manage in terms of people records or employee profile, we need to manage it under people. So our commerce is now being called as finance. Also, the system admin is now being called as the system administration and wherein you have all the system admin activities under this. And the major other changes that we can notice is references and reports, which we used to see it on to the top right corner is part of the menu here. And you have them here under the references where you can access and manage all the key elements. Similarly, the reporting functionality is being added into the menu. So all the reports and all the out of box reports or the custom reports would be available under the workspace. So next key thing that we were seeing is creating an item. So now you can see the difference when we try to create a new item by clicking on add new, it just opens up a form with the required fields and you can notice the classification would be other by default. So just fill up all the required fields and click on add, then the course gets created. So let me just open a course. So the interface is completely different from that of the old UI, where earlier we had three different sections where we had the summary section, then related section, and then the actions menu. So all that is being put under one single interface now. So in order to access the different features, we have this scroll right or scroll left option. So by making use of this, you can access them. Also, we have this drop down. In order, if the screen is not enough uh, to scroll right and access, you can still make use of this drop down option in order to access the other features. Yeah. Okay, so the key thing that we were saying uh, to change the classification of the course from other to online only or to scheduled offering only or blended course. So these are the two tabs that are available online content. So by making use of the online content, if you just add the content object to it, automatically the course classification would change to online type. Next, if we want to add or if we want to make it scheduled only, just add the agenda template by filling up the time slot details. So this 
after adding an agenda to this course, it would turn from other to scheduled offering. If we had it earlier as online content, and if you add an agenda template to it, now this, you can see it here, it will turn from online only to blended type of course. So next I would want to show is the classes and the key functionality changes over there. So we have a course which has been instructor led, which has been scheduled for a classroom session. And under registration, as we earlier uh, had an option to drag and drop users into the registrations, and by clicking on the user record, you had an option to change their registration statuses. Now, we have this option here with the three dots and you just have to click on edit or remove in order to make any changes to the registrations. And in terms of reporting, as we have seen, So here we can see, we can notice all those terminologies are being changed. Earlier, whatever we had a scheduled offering data report is now being called as class. So all the terminologies that's been applied on to the end user interface and to the admin interface is also being applied to the reporting features. So these are the key changes that we can notice in the new UI. And uh, yeah, so that's everything uh, from the new interface changes from my end. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwini, for the info and demonstrating uh, success factor LMS. So this is questions time. Uh, if you have any question which uh, Ashwini or Ritesh can answer, you may please uh, ask them. Hey, this is Alvin, guys. Uh, so that was a, a wonderful uh, um, demonstration. So uh, it, it, it really took us to uh, uh, the new uh, interface, and I'm sure that it's going to be really helping for at least enough for a lot of admin people, because I see there's a lot of, lot of uh, changes in terms of uh, the uh, labels and all this stuff, though very minimal functionality changes, but then of course, then it's going to really help us uh, to navigate uh, to these changes. Right, so um, talking about the question, uh, you know, the need of the R is, you know, we're all talking about the COVID situations here, right? So just wanted to understand on that aspect, yeah? So uh, looking at the COVID situation, so how do you guys think that success factors learning can help in terms of the continuity of training? Um, you know, in terms of like, you know, people actually go in, especially on flexible furloughs, you know, so I don't want to send, you know, mandatory trainings, you know, for a person who's going on a furlough. And I, I want to be, you know, more like fair for all the guys and things like that. So just wanted to understand if you can throw some light on the that specific scenario, it will definitely help me. Yeah, probably, uh, Elvin, I, I can take up that question. Uh, so, yeah, seeing the uh, situation at the moment, it's really difficult that uh, people do gather at a uh, physical place and do the instructor led training. So, one of the thing is uh, either to create all those uh, instructor led trainings as uh, online content and push it to them, and then they will complete those trainings, which are probably compliant with training or uh, mandatory trainings. The other way is uh, what success factor does is uh, they have integration with uh, your virtual partners like webex uh, adobe connect uh, your uh, skype and the microsoft link and you can do your virtual classroom trainings as well so you don't need people together at a physical location and they can join online and as soon as they finish or attend it their uh, attendance will be marked in success factors so that is uh, one other thing which is possible in this situation at the moment yeah that's what I say. 
Thanks, Ritesh. That that uh, kind of answers my question. Can I can I have one more uh, question, please? I, I know I, I'm not too sure that you guys will be able to uh, you know uh, throw some light on this, but still, I mean, I'm just more tempted to ask this question. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, you know, we've been praying uh, uh, with SAP for quite some time that we would like to have some good reporting in in learning management system, which unfortunately we are not having a, a good reporting system. I, I know we have a lot of standard reports. But um, we do need uh, a lot of customization uh, that needs to be done. For instance, you know, we you've got like uh, ORD reports and EC advanced reporting and things like that. So how I mean, are we having any sort of uh, forecasting uh, in terms of the people analytics um, uh, having an integration with the learning management system? Yeah, I, I mean, I can answer uh, that as well. Alvin. Sorry. So, uh, you know, uh, we all know, I mean, probably the LMS reporting is really pain. I mean, we uh, we have gone through with client those uh, those issues, and uh, the ORD uh, or the PRD uh, software which we have uh, as an external software to build those reports, it really needs uh, SQL expertise and all, which uh, might not have with all client internally. So what success factor did is uh, so our report center which has the ORD reports now it has been changed to people analytics where you can create storyline and uh, those kind of reports. And convert that into dashboards or uh, graphs and all. Uh, in the similar line, uh, LMS is not yet part of People Analytics, but it will be there uh, in the uh, uh, 2020, half of the 2020. That's what the timeline at the moment. And you won't have these reports in the LMS uh, separately, but all will be part of the People Analytics where you can create uh, the reports the way how you create it for other modules. Okay. Okay. Looking forward uh, for that. Really. Thank you, Ritesh. Thanks. That's Ritesh, it for much. Yeah. Hi, Ritesh. Uh, Sarang here. Yeah. I uh, you briefly mentioned upon uh, artificial intelligence as uh, one of the upcoming areas. Uh, is there any product or any uh, thing that uh, success factors or SAP is coming up in this area which will enable us to utilize more of the LMS? Yeah, uh, so at the moment, I mean, if you see, uh, I think in uh, December 2019, they come up with something called as a personalized recommendation, which uses machine learning. And how that works is uh, based on your uh, completions or your learning history, it picks up those uh, topics or those uh, areas which you have uh, completed uh, in trainings and uh, give you recommendations based on that. So that is something which is already there at the moment. Other than that, uh, I don't see anything which SAP is coming up uh, specifically for learning. But in terms of uh, AI, uh, we as Vibrant Partners, what we are doing is we are working on a couple of AI solutions, uh, which we'll probably introduce slowly over the social media. But yeah, I mean, there is a plan to introduce some of the these components to help or make the admin work easier. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I do see one question from Steve as well uh, about the development in terms of AI. I think it, it, that's what I think uh, Sarang also asked uh, mostly. Uh, yeah, that covers my question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Can in I terms of the, the yeah, I see that. So, so we, you know, we do lots of compliance monitoring uh, and evidence that people have kept up to date with the knowledge. I assume the reporting tool can be used for that. Yes, correct. So, uh, even for uh, the validated learning, which you see where they have FTA audit and all, which they really need those compliance thing. So that's where the LMS reports, which has the uh, compliance based trainings or the mandate trainings, uh, you can track it via reporting tool saying that uh, all the people has completed those kind of trainings or not. Uh, so that is for sure uh, we have a, in the reporting tool of LMS. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thanks, Javier. Uh, one more from my end. Uh, is uh, content building uh, part of uh, the LMS, uh, I'm sorry if I missed that, but uh, can we utilize that part? Ashwini, if you so, want to take that question. Yeah, Ritesh, yeah, uh, I can actually probably answer that question. Um, so, 
Success Factors LMS is a hosting platform which actually has the capability to integrate it with uh, SAP Enable Now, where uh, SAP Enable Now is a product which can provide a highly engaging learning environment around um, SAP and non-SAP platform. Basically, um, Enable Now is a recording tool where, with features like content uh, sensitive user help, uh, you can also create the transaction uh, document, training structure, test scripts, e-learning materials, quizzes. And once this system is integrated with uh, learning, you can actually host the contents into the system. OK, thanks. Hi, sorry, this is Anna. On, on the Enable Now point, is it something that the clients should pay extra for it or does it come as part of uh, the license uh, when you purchase learning? Yeah, so it's it's not part of the uh, general licenses which we buy it from SAP, but you need to buy it okay. separately. Okay. It's Enable Now, yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, Ritesh uh, and Ashwini, I have a question here, Rajesh here, um, yes. about communities of learning. So uh, success factors, we've been listening about a lot of communities of learning. Uh, how How is it that possible with this new UI? And, uh, for, and also one other question not related to this. Uh, can you uh, throw a bit of light on the validated learning for whom it will be applicable more? Ashwini, if you can take up the first part, I, I'll talk about the validated one then. Sure, Ritesh. Yeah, uh, so Rajesh, to answer your question, um, we have SAP Jam, which can be integrated with the learning management system, where uh, learners can actually create and share their content and the knowledge with each other. So where they can also post presentations, videos and discussions which basically improves the employee engagement. Um, also with Jam, we can create multiple groups. You can also restrict the access to it. So with the community stuff, we basically integrate it with the Jam. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and uh, to answer Rajesh about the validated learning. So basically the validated learning works only for the clients who are uh, pharma or uh, the medical equipment companies or the life size client uh, where they have uh, kind of uh, SOPs which they need uh, for the trainings or uh, they have uh, compliance based training which are really uh, required where uh, they have FTA and all kind of audits and uh, they need to showcase those that uh, the people has already completed this. Also for the validated people, uh, it's not just like you complete the training and it is marked as completed. You have a secondary verification kind of thing, which is e-signature. So as soon as you complete your training, you will have to put a pin and then mark it as completed. So you can't say that uh, someone has completed the training on behalf of someone and only the correct person has completed the training and it appears in the reports. So that's how the validated thing works for those kind of clients. OK, excellent. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. uh, we have another question, which is, how can SAP Jam benefits clients over Yammer? OK, yeah, I can answer. Hi, Noble. Uh, so, you know, uh, see Yammer is something which is not uh, part of uh, your success vectors uh, platform, or I would say the modules which are there in success vectors. So the first thing is for the clients to buy it separately. It has uh, extra cost. The other thing uh, in terms of SAP Jam, uh, so there are a couple of versions which we have in SAP Jam. If we talk about the basic version that comes as free with uh, the bundle which you buy it, you don't need to pay extra licensing. Uh, but the only thing is it doesn't have the integration with LMS, but you have uh, other versions like advanced version and premium version, which is where you can integrate uh, learning onboarding to SAP Jam. And it's the product within success vectors uh, platform. So you are not going somewhere out and uh, you need to do this integration to the third party like Yammer. So that's where I would say it it, it is a benefit for client uh, over Yammer. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rajesh. Thanks. Uh, actually, it's noble. I have one more doubt, like maybe I haven't catched that point. Uh, 
when Ashni was mentioning about uh, custom columns. Um, so suppose like uh, in LMS we have custom twenty custom columns. Uh, I wanted to create make custom column A B C and uh, needs to create a reference field yes and no. Um, so before I was able to manage that field within LMS. So now now this this is not the case. It can only be only be done from an employee profile perspective. Is that you mentioning? Uh, so custom columns, you can actually create them in the new UI, but if it's a user custom column and the data that flows from um, success factors would be a read only data. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, to explain it, I mean previously how it was that you create a custom column here and uh, you can make that editable here as well. But now the thing is uh, the native LMS is kind of stopped from uh, SAP and they are saying you need to still implement the uh, platform and the data which is uh, there in LMS. It will always come from uh, platform and you will not be able to modify that data. So that's how it is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rudeshan. Thank you, Ashni. OK. Any any other question from anyone? OK, so. So Ritesh, what's next? OK, all right, guys, so as mentioned earlier as well, the recordings will be uploaded on Vibrant Partners social media. You can uh, copy the link. OK, and for any query uh, or any inquiry, if you have you can definitely reach out to uh, the given email ID that is ritesh.singhvi at vibrantpartners.com. Alternatively, you can even reach out to our sales and expert team as well on the given email IDs. OK, so with this, I thank thank you so much Ritesh and Ashwini. Actually, this was a very fantastic session. Lots of information for every one of us. Thank you everyone for joining the webinar. Cheers. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good one, guys. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers.